Okay, so welcome back to the HQ for the second time today. Y'all are blessed. It's a blessed day for Cortland Sutton because we just got confirmation. Demarius Thomas on his way to Houston in exchange for a fourth round pick. They gave up Demarius Thomas and a seventh round pick for a fourth round pick, meaning Demarius Thomas will now take over Will Fuller's spot because Will Fuller's obviously gone for the year with an ACL tear. So this leaves us with Cortland Sutton as the wide receiver two in Denver. What I wanna do is basically do uh, live research. So I'm gonna be looking into the impact of this trade. I wanna see what the target shares were in Denver and Houston and what we can expect pretty much going forward. So this is going to be uh, a live research documentation practice. So what I'm gonna do is open up airyards.com and fantasyinsiders.com. Those are two free resources that anyone could use. What it shows you is the target share of players on teams, uh, as well as the average depth of target, as well as the air yards, the air yard target share, um, and then Fantasy Insiders has snap counts and snap percentages. So again, those both are free. I will link them down below so you guys can do your own research. As y'all know, I like to teach y'all how to fish. So y'all can stay eating, baby. Big dogs always eating. Also, if you missed the waiver wire video this morning, I will link it up here as well as down below. So we are going to first look at Denver and see how they have been dispersing targets thus far into the season and see what the target shares of Demarius Thomas were prior to the trade and what we can expect going forward for Cortland Sutton. Okay, up to this point, we are looking at Emmanuel Sanders leading the team with a 22% target share. Demarius Thomas comes in at a close second, 19% uh, target share. Cortland Sutton, <coughs> who's at 13%. Uh, Jeff Hireman and Jake Butt were at 11%, but these only count the games in which they were in the game. So Jake Butt wouldn't be at 11% if you're looking at the overall target. So just talking about the games in which they actually played. Philip Lindsay, Devonta Booker, both at 8%. So you're looking at a combination of Sanders, Demarius Thomas, Cortland Sutton, 41, 54% of the targets are going to those top three wide receivers. The next wide receiver in terms of target share, uh, Tim Patrick with 3% of the targets. So I'm assuming this is actually going to be almost identical to when we had Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius Thomas taking the majority of the targets in this offense, which means Cortland Sutton gets a monster boost here um, because that obviously opens up 19% of the targets here. It also opens up 25% of the air yards. And as we know, air yards are super valuable. I also want to take a look at the red zone and inside the 10 zone targets to see if Demarius Thomas was really used down there. I'm not sure he was because he wasn't scoring a ton of touchdowns. So Jeff Hireman leads the team with 12 red zone targets. Demarius Thomas has eight three targets inside the 10. So it wasn't like heavily utilized down there. So the touchdown upside, we will have to see, although they might give Cortland Sutton more red zone or end zone, 10 zone looks because I think he's more of an explosive athlete and could probably get up a little higher at this point. But if you're looking at Cortland Sutton, he's basically, you know, the second coming of Demarius Thomas and arguably a better uh, prospect at this point than he was. So what I think this does is kind of puts Cortland Sutton at, um, he's got to be a, a a wide receiver, a high-end wide receiver three with a lot of, lot of upside. Again, I still do want to see um, Cortland Sutton produce without Demarius Thomas there. And I know everyone's going nuts. And like every single time he makes a play, they're like, oh, I told you to draft him or whatever. Like the like two weeks ago, he, he caught one ball. It happened to be a touchdown. So everyone's like, oh my God, Sutton is so good. But he didn't catch his other two targets. He had 28 yards on the game. So he hasn't had a game. This last previous game was his highest total in terms of yardage. He had 78 yards, three catches, four targets. So he has not had a game with more than six targets yet. He has not had a game with more than three catches yet. 78 yards was the highest total since uh, week six where he had 58 yards, but he has scored in two of his previous four games. So what I'm looking at is uh, Cortland Sutton. If he is on your waiver wire, and I believe he was available in 90% of leagues, he is the top target right now because, again, like I said, I think a lot of the targets are going to shuffle into just Sanders and just Cortland Sutton. And even if he's not terribly efficient on that, he's averaging 19.1 yards per reception, which is pretty crazy right now, um, which is a very high number. And I think you're going to see him, you know, get a lot of chances to make plays downfield, almost like a Kenny Galladay situation where he may not get a million targets, but the targets he gets are a lot of them are downfield. A lot of them are in the end zone and are very valuable. So... Cortland Sutton, yeah, like I said, he's a high upside wide receiver three with uh, with definite 
a good chance of ending up as you know a top 24, top 20 wide receiver by the end of the year. Um, I want to kind of check out his schedule right now as well, see what we got lined up for the rest of the season, and he'll be the number one outside wide receiver. So the thing about that also is he's going to be taking on a lot of the opposing team's top wide receivers, because Sanders is the slot guy here, right? So let's look at the matchups and see if he has any like shadow coverage guys coming up. Uh, it's actually interesting. So in week nine, Houston's playing Denver. So Demarius Thomas's first game as a Texan will be against Denver. So that's a tough matchup for him. But Cortland Sutton goes against Houston. That's not a that's not that tough of a pass matchup. Um, although they've been pretty good against outside wide receivers. They get a bye in week 10. Then they get the Chargers, who will probably shadow him with Casey Hayward. So that's a tough matchup. They get Pittsburgh at home, um, which isn't that tough of a matchup. But Joe Hayden has quietly been a pretty good cover corner and they've been using him to shadow a lot so that's not a very easy matchup then they're at Cincinnati who have been terrible against the pass at San Francisco um Sherman has been all right I mean he, the numbers have been good but every time I watch him play he gets absolutely fucking burned so I'm not a huge fan of of the whole Sherman hype thing plus Sherman's not a uh, shadow corner so that doesn't really matter they get Cleveland at home and then Oakland so the playoff matchups aren't terrible Cleveland's been pretty good but at Oakland it couldn't have asked for a better week 16 fantasy playoff matchup so the the schedule I'm not like completely terrified of. So I think Sutton is, like I said, high end wide receiver three, wide receiver two upside uh, with upside to have wide receiver one type weeks because the volume is going to start funneling towards him. Um, fab wise, yeah, if you're desperate for wide receiver, man, fucking let it fly. Let it fly. 25% uh, you know, minimum, 35%, 50% if you think you want to grab them like that. 60% if you're going wild. I mean, dude, honestly, I'm not even going to fault you if you go higher than that. If you want to go 75, 100%, fuck it, man. So what we do over here, we take risks. Scare money, don't make no money. On the flip side of things, Demarius Thomas, I'm not that high in this move. I don't think this is an upgrade for him. I think this is a downgrade for him, if anything. I don't see him getting 22% of the target, or he had 19%. I don't even think I see him getting that much of the targets. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they utilize him here because Will Fuller was a field stretcher, and I think that's what made him a great fantasy option. Um, and Will Fuller was inconsistent at times. So at best, I, I, we're definitely not getting the replication of Demarius Thomas stats right into Will Fuller stats because he's not getting those long balls and he's not making plays like Will Fuller was. This knocks Kiki Cutie's upside a little bit because I was very high in him because I was like, oh, he's going to be the clear number two. And while I still kind of think he's going to be the two, I'm interested to see if they run Cutie on the outside at all and maybe use Demarius Thomas in the slot. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they'll keep Cutie in the slot, Demarius Thomas on the outside. So if I had to <coughs> choose one of them, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Woo! if I had to choose one of them, I would choose Cutie in PPR as well. Another reason is they're running a lot more in the 10-yard line, inside the 10-yard line, inside the 5-yard line this year with Lamar Miller than they had been in previous years. Also, DeAndre Hopkins is getting a shitload of targets. I think he's getting like 38% or 40% of their 10-zone targets and, and uh, end-zone targets. So I think they're going to continue to do that because he's so good down there in that aspect of the field. Um, for me, this Demarius Thomas is still going to be probably a wide receiver four. Uh, I don't expect his production to really get any higher than it has been this year, which has been inconsistent at best. Um, they got the Chargers. Pitts, oh, they still have him lined up as a uh, Denver wide receiver, so I can't really look at that. I guess I can go to Hopkins' matchups and see what he's got for the rest of the year. So again, they play at Denver. Then they're at Washington, which is not an easy pass matchup. Tennessee, Cleveland, Indy, New York, at New York Jets, at Philly. Um, nothing to really be afraid of. But again, like in, in my head, it would go... Cortland Sutton, Kiki QT, Demarius Thomas, wide receiver, high end wide receiver three, wide receiver two. Um, that's probably startable week over week from now on. Kiki QT, I hope they sit him this week, let him rest over the bye. Then he'll come back as a wide receiver three in PPR. Demarius Thomas will have his wide receiver two, three games, but I, I, I'm still not high on him. I was never high on him coming into the season, and that's kind of what I see going on for the rest of the season. So, I think that's pretty much the only impact. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a huge upgrade to Deshaun Watson. Of course, it's nice to have a weapon, but I don't, you know, I don't think Marius Thomas adds a huge boost to his outlook. I feel like that's really the only outlooks that it would affect as of right now. So that's the recap. I just wanted to get something up quickly because I know a lot of you guys are going to ask about this. And I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was valuable to y'all. Uh, check out Fantasy Insiders or AirYards.com. Both are very, very, very valuable. Actually, we didn't check out the snap counts really yet, so... Um, I'm pretty sure in terms of snap counts for the wide receivers, Sutton had been playing pretty much almost full-time at this point. Yeah, so he played 67% of the snaps in week eight. 
DT was at 71%. He played 68% week seven. DT was at 69%. So the gap was getting very, very close. And I guess they were just like, screw it. We're not going to pay Demarius Thomas next year anyways. Cortland Sutton seems to be a better player at this point. So yeah, that's really it. That's how I see it going down. Thumbs up the video if you enjoyed. If you found it valuable, subscribe to the channel. If you are new, I will be back on Thursday with our midseason first round mock draft, redoing the mock draft of 2018 fantasy football drafts, as well as midseason MVPs and whatnot, whatever, 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 whatever. Check out today's waiver wire video if you need more pickups. And that's going to be it. Peace.